In order to get astronauts beyond the International Space Station, NASA needs the most advanced materials and innovative ways to tie it all together. Take a closer look at the leading edge of technology that will launch us towards the lunar surface, its lessons in heavy metal, and its next on real world. To create a very special spacecraft, one that could one day take astronauts back to the moon, NASA is using some very special parts. The Ares-1 rocket is made up of advanced materials and amazing engineering. Take for instance, the spacecraft skin. Ares-1 shell will be made from aluminum lithium 2195, which is very strong and very light. But when you weld pieces of this material together using traditional fusion methods that will melt the metal, you get big problems in the form of tiny holes. These small pores weaken the metal and make it useless in an application like Ares-1. So NASA needed to find a better way to do it. Here at the Marshall Space Flight Center, we do friction stir welding. Robert Carter is the shop floor lead in the weld process development facility at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Friction stir welding is a solid state welding process. Solid state means that there is no melting involved in this process. In conventional fusion welding, pieces of metal are melted at their common area and joined together. But this is different. In friction stir welding, the heat and force cause the two pieces to become one. Yeah, I weld. The way it works is we, we have what we call a pin tool. This is a pin tool. And this tool is rotated at several hundred RPMs. It's plunged into the surface of a workpiece uh, with uh, tens of thousands of pounds of force. It's then traversed along this weld joint while it's rotating until it gets to the end of the weld. And then we retract, and, and that's uh, the end of the weld. So the friction causes the heat. The faster the pin tool rotates and the faster the traverse, the more friction, and thus, more heat. The heat softens the metal, but it doesn't melt it. This state where the metal is soft but not liquefied is known as plasticity. This happens at about 800 degrees Fahrenheit for most metals. To find the Celsius equivalent, subtract 32 from the Fahrenheit temperature, 800, and multiply by 5 ninths. That's nearly 427 degrees Celsius. The force applied to the softened metal by the rotating pin tool turns the two pieces of metal into one seamless solid sheet. If you look at the very beginning of this plate here, you can see that this was originally two pieces of metal that have been welded together using friction stir welding. And then just to look at the back, uh, when we perform friction stir welds, we're pushing up against a solid backing anvil. And so this is what the root side of the weld joint looks like. It's uh, completely smooth. For welding two very large pieces together, Robert uses a slightly different process. There's another uh, version of friction stir welding that we developed here at Marshall uh, called self-reacting friction stir welding, which is done with a tool that looks like this. Uh, and what we do in self-reacting is rather than having this type of pin tool which we push against the solid backing anvil, uh, we actually install the tool in the plate like so and we pinch the part between two shoulders while this assembly is rotating and traveling. Uh, so in this process, what we do is we've eliminated the need for a backing anvil. Uh, the benefit there is it makes our tooling somewhat simpler and easier to fabricate when we're building large scale. Without stir friction welding, Ares-1 might never be able to get off the ground. We get improved mechanical properties over conventional fusion welding. We also tend to produce fewer defects. Those two things together mean that we uh, can build a vehicle that's lighter because the improved strength allows us to reduce our weld land thicknesses. So we have better tensile strength uh, and also uh, we have improved uh, fracture properties. Basically that means that there's a less of a propensity for cracks to grow. In general, friction stir welds have uh, strengths that are roughly 20% better uh, it means a 20% improvement in mechanical properties relative to fusion welds. They do all the work in this huge building at Marshall. This facility is called the Weld Process Development Facility. 
Everything you see in here right now today is being designed, developed, installed specifically to build Aries One Upper Stage uh, full-scale developmental hardware. So we're going to be building a manufacturing demonstration article. We're also going to be building potentially at least some of the structural development test articles that are going to be used for the Aries One Upper Stage. We're developing all the manufacturing techniques so that we can find the problems and work out the bugs, even develop our tooling designs, develop our, our fixture designs, develop the software for the weld tools. We do all that up here at Marshall, offline, so that we don't have, end up having to solve these problems on the shop floor. All this hard work and amazing engineering has this next generation spacecraft pointed in the right direction as NASA looks beyond the space station to take astronauts to new worlds. Follow the journey at www.nasa.gov.